Hello, big team. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Pay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth, and I'm excited today to bring to you the next installment in my Newberry project. Now, if you are not in the United States, you may not be familiar with the John Newberry Medal. That is a medal that is given every year to a distinguished contribution to children's literature. There is one medal winner each year, and there are two or three... I think sometimes five honor books. Basically, the honor books are the runners up. So I started a project several years ago where I decided I was going to read all of the Newberry winners. Now, I have, when I say read, of course, I include audiobooks. And so several of these books I have listened to on audio, some more than once, some I've read in print. It's just a whole variety. However, I can best consume that book. And as of this year, 2021, there are now 100 Newbery Medal winning books. The first medal was awarded in 1922. So I decided this would be a good year to really try hard to wrap up this project. And not only am I reading all of the Newbery winners, I decided a year or two ago that I thought it would be fun to do a video project as well. So I decided to break up the winners into decades and I would bring to you a video about all of the Newberry winning medal winning books from each decade. So I've already done a video of the winners from the 1990s and the 80s and the 70s. So now that I've got three in addition to this one, I need to go ahead and make a playlist. So I'll make sure that gets done before I upload this video and then I will add this video to it. Because at this point I may skip around. I may uh, do the 2000s next because I've already read all of those. and uh, Or I may just continue reading the ones I haven't from the 50s and go uh, backwards that way. I don't know. You'll just have to wait and see. So I hope if you're not subscribed to my channel that you will subscribe and uh, and be alert for the next installment of this series. But for right now, I have the Newberry Medal winning books from the 1960s right behind me on this shelf. And I want to just briefly go through, go over each one, tell you a little bit about it, whether I liked it or didn't, and um, and just go from there. So the very first book from 1960. This is actually, well, this was published in 1959, and it was the Newberry winner in 1960, because to be eligible for a Newberry winner, um, for the Newberry medal in any given year, your book has to have been published in the previous year. So it's, it's limited to books from the previous year. So this is Onion John by Joseph Crumgold. This is actually um, one of the more recent ones that I have read. I've had this sitting on my shelf for several years. This edition was given to me by a very sweet lady who I used to go to church with. She has now passed away, but we used to exchange books back and forth, and she would go, I think she was going to library sales before I was, and uh, she found this somewhere and thought it looked like something that I would enjoy, and and, and I did enjoy it. Finally got around to reading it. Now, um, Onion John is a story about a man who is an immigrant from, oh goodness, I shouldn't have even said that because now I can't remember where he's from. Um, he is in the United States and he's not homeless. He does have a home, but his home is maybe not up to the standards that the people in town think it should be. He is a well-loved person and the town decides they are going to band together to build him a better home. And they go a little overboard. So there are several things that happen and Basically, it, it just goes from there. But the main relationship in this book is the relationship between this young boy, who is our main character. Well, they're both main characters. And he befriends Onion John, and he learns to communicate with him. Even though Onion John, it never really says if he speaks English. I think what he's speaking is a very heavily accented English that a lot of people can't understand, or maybe it's a combination of his native tongue and English. It doesn't really ever say in the book, but this boy basically figures out how to communicate with him, and so he kind of becomes the interpreter, and, uh, and it just goes from there. It wasn't a fantastic blow-me-away kind of book, but I did enjoy it. I thought that it was very good. It's kind of a coming-of-age story. One of the other things happening in the book is the boy's relationship with his father. His father has some very strong ideas about 
what he wants his son to do with his future. And the boy would like to you know, pursue some of his own ideas and aspirations and dreams. So I'm sorry I keep saying the boy. I just read this last month and I can't even think what his name is. Uh, what his name is. It is done in first person. So, um, you know, you don't, uh, you don't often see his, uh, his name in here, but anyway, um, it, it's, it's irrelevant, really, what his name is. It is just a coming-of-age story um, where several different relationships are explored and, you know, friendships, and uh, and it's worth picking up if you like to read middle-grade books. It's not, like I said, it's it's not something that just blew me away, but it is a Newbery winner, and I'm glad that I read it. So then the next book is one that I read many years ago on audio, and I just reread it or re-listened to it yesterday because I remember it took place on an island. Well, you can tell that from the from the title, but I just didn't remember enough details. I knew it would be short, and so it was a very enjoyable three hours that I spent listening to it on audio as I was moving about my house doing other things. This is the island or just Island of the Blue Dolphins by Scott O'Dell. And I was just reading that this is based on a true story of a woman who was left on an island by herself for 18 years. And it doesn't really specify in this book how many years she was there alone on the island. It starts out with a tribe of people and a series of events happen and things happen. And um, she ends up being alone on an island. There are some other animals there. Of course, they're wild animals. And it's just her survival story of what she does going forward and how she passes the time, how she survives and eats and and lives. And I thought it was quite interesting, very compelling. It's not super gritty in that, um, you know, I'm sure that it would be extremely difficult. And it does indicate in the book that it is extremely difficult, but, you know, she doesn't starve. And it. I think it's probably... Um, I don't know. I don't want to say it's pared down, but it's just really more appropriate for younger readers. It's not super gritty. It is just a compelling story of how a young woman survives and, uh, you know, on an island by herself. And since she has grown up on that island, I think it is not as difficult for her to be alone on the island because she's already, it's not like she's stranded uh, you know, being shipwrecked and she's in a new environment. This is her environment and she knows what she needs to do to survive. It is just made more difficult by the fact that she is now alone. And then, so this is the Newberry winner from 1961. And the winner from 1962 is a definite favorite. I have not read this in a long time, but let me tell you why this was so eye-opening for me. So The Bronze Bow by Elizabeth George Spear takes place in biblical times. And Jesus is a side figure in the book, not the main character at all. And I would not consider this to be a Christian or religious book at all. It is just simply set in the, um, in the nation of, uh, well, what would I say? How would you say it? Um, it's it's set in, in Israel, I guess. Yeah, it would have to be. In Jerusalem. <laughs> and um, this boy is very upset about how his people are treated because the Romans are, are over them. They are the governing body who take, you know, they manage them. They're under the rule of the Romans and the Roman guards. And growing up in a Christian home and being a Christian my whole life, I never got a clear picture of what that looked like until I read this book from this boy's perspective, because he was a Jewish boy who very much hated the Romans and hated the, the, the rule that they had over the Jewish people. And I just, you know, I just never understood it. I never understood what that looked like until I read this book. And I thought it was a very good book. Now, 
through the story, the boy does come to, um, he does have an interaction with Jesus. And it, like I said, it's not what I would consider a Christian book. It does have Christian undertones because Jesus is part of the story. But of course, this is before the days of, you know, the Christian church. This is before the church was established or anything like that, because this is during Jesus' lifetime. And I just thought it was such a fantastic look at what life could be like for a Jewish boy in that time frame. And it was just completely eye-opening for me. And ever since then, I I feel like I, I get it. When I read those parts of the New Testament um, where the, you know, about the Romans versus the Jews and things like that, it's just, you know, I have, a, I have a much better visual of that. So for that reason alone, I would recommend the book. And the boy does go through a lot of growth through it all. And his, his feelings and hatred and political views, you know, grow and change as, as he grows. And uh, I just think it's a very good book. It's definitely worth a reread. I have not read it in several years, but uh, I would definitely read it again. And that is the winner from 1962. Now, the winner from 1963 is one that you're probably all going to recognize. It is probably the most popular, the most famous of any of the Newberry winners of the 1960s. In fact, you may not even realize, if you've heard of this, that it's from as far back as the 60s. But this is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Lingle. Of course, there was a fairly recent movie that was a movie adaptation. There is another older movie adaptation, I'm pretty sure. But, you know, anyway, it's just a, a very unique fantasy. I don't want to say time travel. It's more of a space travel, but not even really that. Interdimensional travel, I guess, would be a good word for it. Uh, it's just very unique. It's very out there. So if you're not a fantasy person, you might not enjoy this. But, um, or, or even, I don't even know if you'd really call it science fiction or fantasy. There is definitely some science fiction in this and, and some fantasy and, um, you know, I don't really need to say any more because if you've heard of it, you've probably read it. If you haven't heard of it and you're not into fantasy, you probably wouldn't want to read it. But anyway, uh, I did enjoy it. It's not my favorite book of all time by any means. I liked it. I liked it fine, but it's not even really my favorite of this era. But I have read it a couple of times. There is, a, a, I think, four more books in the series. I've only read book two uh, since this one, and um, I haven't read the others. I'll probably get to them at some point. But uh, anyway, it is a well-loved, very popular children's book. And if you read middle grade books at all, then, you know, you might want to include this one in your um, bucket list of middle grade reading. And then the next one is one that is, oh, the next one is one that, again, it was fine, but it didn't blow me away. It's a coming of age story about a boy in New York City. It's called It's Like This Cat by Emily Novell. And it's, the cat is really not even that central of a character. The boy is really the main character. The cat is really more of just a, a venue for him to uh, to speak to, to befriend him while he is going through all the things that he's going through. I believe it's set in the, um, actually, I'm not even sure if it's set in the 60s. It may be set earlier than that. Um, I'm trying to think if this is contemporary for, uh, for its day. It may very well be. Anyway, I just remember it's set in New York City, and, uh, and it's a coming of age story. So if that sounds interesting to you, you might want to pick it up. This is the winner from 1964. Yes, the winner from 1960. No. Yes, yes. <laughs> Took me a second because I could always remember the next one because I read this one year for a challenge. This was published the year I was born, which is 1964, but it's the Newberry winner from 1965. This is Shadow of a Bull. It is by an author who I will not attempt to pronounce. I meant to look and see if I could find any clue about how to pronounce it. I'm assuming that her first name is Maya, but her last name is 
is uh, is one that I'm not even going to attempt. But this book was interesting. It is about a boy whose father was a very famous bullfighter. And of course, it is expected that he will follow in his father's footsteps, but he has other ideas. And, uh, and it just goes from there. I remember there being a quote from this book that I thought was so profound, and I think I even shared it in my booktube video back in 2015 or 16 whenever I read this book uh, but I didn't take I didn't take time to go back and try to remember what the quote was anyway uh, I did enjoy the book it's again not anything that really blew me away I'm not a big fan of the idea of bullfighting and um, you know it was an interesting book about a boy who again, wants to grow up and has his own ideas about what he wants to do with his life, much like Onion John. And then the next one is actually based on a historical figure. I have to take these off carefully so I don't, dom don't have the domino effect. This one I just listened to earlier this year or last year. I hope I'm going to say this correctly. This is I, Juan de Pareja, and it is by... Um, Elizabeth Barton de Trevino. It is a biographical story about a, a man who was born into slavery. His original mistress, I believe, died, and then he was sent to be the slave and an, assist, an assistant to a, an artist. And the artist quickly realized that Juan had a, an artistic talent as well. And at the time, it was illegal for slaves to participate in any kind of creative activity like that. So it was, you know, it was done on the down low, as they say, and, um, and he became an artist in his own right. And this is uh, based on a, a true historical figure. I believe both, you know, it's a true story. And I thought it was very interesting. I don't know much about art history, but I did look up these people and, and found uh, portraits that were painted of uh, both of them. And it was quite interesting. I, I did enjoy it. And then the next one is 1967. This one I also I listened to on audio just a year or two ago, maybe last year, Up a Road Slowly by Irene Hunt. There was also a a Newberry Honor book by Irene Hunt called Across Five Aprils. And I neglected to mention that when I did my Civil War um, comparing Civil War novels and uh, Linda Book Lady called me out on it. She said, "I what about, you know, what about Across Five Aprils? And I had completely forgotten about that. Uh, so, of course, Across Five Aprils is about the five Aprils that were involved, uh, you know, before, after, and during the Civil War here in the United States in the 1860s. So, anyway, Irene Hunt also wrote this book, Up a Road Slowly. I think this is contemporary for the time it was written. It is about a young girl whose mother dies and her and her brother are sent to live with an aunt. Now their father is still living and he stays home. Their older sister who is 17 also stays home. She does not have to go and live with the aunt because I believe, well, the explanation is that she has, you know, she has too much going on, you know, with finishing high school. And I think she is eventually she's going to be married in the years that our main character is at the aunt's house. And I believe the father just doesn't feel equipped to continue to raise the two younger children. He wants them to have a maternal influence and, um, you know, and, and he just doesn't feel like he can do that and continue working or whatever. I, they, honestly, those sound kind of like flimsy excuses to me. And I think that's portrayed in the book a little bit. Um, Maybe not quite so much as what I just said, but anyway, it, how it all happens, she ends up spending a decade with her aunt and comes to love where she is and her aunt and her surroundings and friends and everything. It is a very nice story. There is some heartbreak. There's um, just a lot of things that uh, that go on, but it does turn from a ne negative experience into a positive experience, and uh, I thought it was a very enjoyable book. It's, it's not long, uh, definitely worth picking up, and it is Up a Road Slowly by Irene Hunt. And then probably the next most famous book from this 
of this era of the Newberry winners is the from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler. Now, I don't know if there's ever been a movie adaptation of this. I feel like I would enjoy watching a movie of this. I have read this a couple of times. I enjoyed it more the first time and then I kind of forgot what it was about and I came back a couple years ago and I listened to it again and it, it wasn't what I remembered it to be. But still, it is a very enjoyable book. It's about two kids who basically run away and go to live at the Met and uh, and how they manage to do that. I don't think that would even be humanly possible in today's world, but back when this was written, uh, maybe it could. I don't know. It's interesting to think about. So that's basically the story. I mean, that's part of the story. Uh, I won't go into all the details about how Mrs. Basilie Frankweiler comes into the picture, but uh, anyway, I've read a few stories by E.L. Konigsberg. She also has another Newbery winner called View from, I think it's View from Saturday, uh, that I enjoyed as well. It, um, I believe it was published in I don't know if it's 80s or 90s. I know I've, I've already talked about it in a previous Newberry video. So anyway, this one's definitely worth picking up. And then another one of my most recent reads. This is kind of what held me up from getting this video done any sooner. Because this is the winner from 1969. It is The High King by Lloyd Alexander. This is book five in the Chronicles of Prydain. And I was not about to read it until I had read the other four books. So... I am so glad that I did. Now, this could be read on its own as a standalone, but you would not appreciate it nearly so much as if you read the first four books. The The friendships and the loyalties and the camaraderie of this troop of people in this series is just fantastic. I loved this whole series so much. It was a little slow to get into at first with the very first book, but definitely so good. And it just continues to grow as you go. And you can't wait to see how these characters are going to come together again, you know, as, as you read each book. So I would definitely recommend it and, uh, and start with the first book, which is called The Book of Three. The second book in the series, which is The Black Cauldron, there is a movie adaptation that Disney did for that movie. Uh, that is a Newbery Honor book, and I think maybe one of the others has gotten some sort of notable award. But uh, anyway, I'm glad that even though it's book five, that the series did get some Newbery representation. Uh, at least, you know, well, it, it got, like I said, the second book got a, uh, an honor, and then the fifth book, a Newbery Medal. And it's just definitely worth worth picking up. Uh, I very much enjoyed it. It is a, I guess, a medieval fantasy, very light on the fantasy, not uh, not super magical, just very much. Um, well, it is a coming of age story as well. Taryn is our main character that you know, we, we see and follow throughout all of the books and, uh, and his friends and comrades and, um, just the people all around him, his found family, and they're all just wonderful. So I would definitely recommend The High King as well as the rest of the Chronicles of Prydain series. So that is it. That is the 10 Newbery Medal winners from or of the 1960s. There are several honor books. I have not read a whole lot of the honor books from this era. I did mention a few of the ones that I have read, like Across Five Aprils and the, the Black cauldron. Other than that, I don't think I've read any others. If I have, if I remember later, I will put them into the description down below. But at some point after I get finished reading all of the Newberry winners, I may go back then and systematically try to read all the honor books. There are just so many more honor books than there are winners. I thought I would focus first on the medal winners. Anyway, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, I will uh, uh, put a link here to the playlist uh, that um, you can go back and see what I thought about the winners of the 60s, or uh, I'm sorry, this is the 60s, the 90s, the 80s, and the 70s, and uh, coming hopefully very soon and within this year, I hope to bring you the, re the rest of the decades that I have not brought to you yet. So for now, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your favorite Newberry winners are, if you've read any at all. I know some of you have commented that you are also trying to read all the Newberry winners, and I wish you much success in that. It is a fun endeavor, a fun project 
project. And if you've never thought about it, I want to challenge you to do that. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.